All right. First thing. So We're very passionate about Lord of the Rings. Um, first thing. My favorite character in the novels is Theoden. Mm-hmm. Theoden is my all-time... Theoden and actually Eomir might be my second favorite um, mm-hmm. because they have such great moments in the novels. <laughs> and here's the thing. In Two Towers, Theoden, for most of the movie... Um, and even the very beginning of the Return of the King, for some reason, he's portrayed as arrogant, hesitant. I know what it is you want of me, but I will not bring further death to my people. Um, until the beacons are finally yeah. lit, and then Aragorn goes, "They're lit. Lit. Yeah. Are we going to help?" And he yeah. goes, "Yes, we'll answer." Um, but before then, it's like he goes through this transformation, picks up the sword, um, and uh, and gets knocked out of his spell. But then right after that, he's like in Aragorn's face, like, well, last time I checked, I was king of Rohan and not you. When last I looked, Theoden, not Aragorn, was king of Rohan. And then like uh, when they're at Helm's Deep, he's kind of like angsty too. It's just he's never like portrayed as actually turning the corner and becoming like a hero Mm -hmm. until the the third movie. Yeah. Yeah. So that bothered me, you know. Yeah, Did kind you of all that? all stuck, uh, uh, all focused on glory in the movies. Because even at the end, yeah. the reason, even in the two towers, the reason he rides out that um is for glory, and it's Aragorn who has to say for your people, and it's kind of like yeah, them too for death and glory. <laughs> right. It's like so very it's Greek. Like, yeah. No. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. So. That that bothered me because mm-hmm. he's my favorite character. I would really like to have seen him more like he was in the books, where he just becomes the hero, like right after Gandalf knocks him, um, knocks his senses back into him. You yeah. know, um, so that was unfortunate. Um, it wasn't something I really picked up while I was watching the movies for the first couple times, um, but then after I picked it up, it was like, ooh, I don't really like that. Mm-hmm. And along the line of kings. The second thing I didn't like, why is Aragorn lacking confidence throughout the films? The same blood flows in my veins. The same weakness. So he's portrayed as reluctant right. for basically all three movies. Um, and that's way different from how he's portrayed in the books. Um, in the books, he's like determined from the very get-go. He's been waiting to to reclaim the throne and this was the moment the reason why it, it it's interesting like why didn't any of the other heirs to a sealdor's throne claim the throne well it's because the timing wasn't right yet why was the timing not right because that epic showdown between king and enemy didn't happen yet and that was that was what aragorn's destiny was and he was willing to meet that okay. that's why in the books Right when they set out from Rivendell in the, in the first book, he's given the reforged sword. It's almost like him going, I'm ready. I've got the sword now. Mm-hmm. Um, the sword of the king. And in the movies, he doesn't get that thing back until the third the movie. movie. Yeah. In a weird way, too. Elrond just shows up with it in a yeah. tent. You're like, well, how long was he riding with that? I don't yeah. Know. yeah. Yeah. Wasn't fond of that. And that's like to, to talk about a little Christian things that most people probably wouldn't notice. That whole story, if you have the one kingdom like there was israel mm-hmm. and then it splits into the kingdoms you know arnor and gondor yeah. so you have the two like israel and judah and then they're both destroyed to some extent and then and then the line of jesus you know and the genealogy goes through all these people who have no idea yeah. who they are until yeah. the time he finally comes and the and, timing wasn't and right that's like the until... rangers coming through you know yeah. like the whole storyline that it that it's pulling from and mm. stuff is very um yeah aragorn yeah everything's hesitant about about marrying his about marrying about marrying Arwen, Arwen yeah about Are you kidding he That's almost seems almost ashamed of like the fact that he's like yeah. the, one of the the Dunedain you know and it's like don't like it yeah don't like that, that was I mean he was portrayed awesome by Vigo Mortensen right he did yeah. um and Vigo like <laughs> he he took over that character yeah apparently like he would go fishing on when he wasn't filming and he would bring his sword with him. <laughs> when they, they were like doing screen tests with the sword for the first time, he leaned over to whoever the casting director was and said, I'm going to take this with me. <laughs> okay. I you might know, have gotten that story kind of wrong, but that's what I remember from the extended edition. That's funny yeah. because um, just 
Isn't it funny, like, when you see a movie and people become so, in your mind, ingrained with a character that it's oh, yeah. weird to see them and stuff later? Oh, but, yeah. Like, especially Elijah Wood. I think the next movie after The Lord of the Rings I saw him was Sin, Sin City, City, where he's, like, a weird a cannibal cannibal <laughs> killer dude. And you're it's like, like, eating prostitutes like, what and is stuff. This? Like, what the? <laughs> yeah. That's Frodo. That's, yeah, exactly. That's you can't Frodo. do that. You're Frodo. You can't do that, Frodo, <laughs> son of Drogo. <laughs> eating people's hands. Um, so, on the... On the note of Aragorn, Aragorn falling off a cliff in the two towers, mm. like that whole the, the whole sequence where the war riders show up, I could see why they wanted to infuse some like action because that doesn't happen in the books. Right? They say, hey, yeah. there's people out and about. All right, that's why we'll go to Helm's Deep. They never actually meet them in battle, um, but in the movies, there's like this whole sequence. Aragorn gets like thrown over a cliff edge yeah. and left for dead by yeah. his friends. <laughs> Um, and, uh, he comes to because, like, he has a vision of Arwen right. kissing him and reviving yeah, him Yeah, the something. grace from her, like, things she'd given I mean, him. What her, the heck? Her Evan Star. I watched it the first time and went, okay, this is a little weird. You know, even <laughs> in the theater, I was like, that's a weird decision to do. Aragorn going over the cliff. Almost as weird. Not as weird, but almost as weird as Princess Leia floating from outer space back to the thing. You're oh, like, boy. That's how you're going to depict your force oh, power? That's weird. Le- <laughs> Leia Poppins yeah. can survive the vacuum she of space. She would have the same like, thing. Surviving the vacuum of space. Oh, I just... <laughs> we'll, we'll have another, to talk another Star Wars discussion. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that was... Uh... Okay. No Star Wars today. Um... So that was unnecessary. It seemed like they did that just so Aragorn could see the oncoming troops from Isengard. Mm-hmm. But, yeah. I mean, in the books, a scout sees that, tells them, and they go to Helm's Deep. Like, literally, they invented, like, two chapters that didn't exist in the book. Yeah. So, excessive, excessive. Now, um, let me ask you this, because I honestly don't remember. I haven't read the books in a while. Because I love the scene in the movie when they see the white wizard approaching, thinking it's Saruman, but it's yeah. Gandalf. Now, did that occur in the books like that? Yes. Were they, they were out in the field. Okay. It's I think that more intense great. than that because right. Saruman Well, they try does. to attack him at first. Like, he shoots the arrow and oh, wow. he's like, splashes it. So, in the books, they're, they are actually spotted by Saruman mm-hmm. first. And they, they think it, they, they're not sure what to make of it. Because there's just an old man clothed in white off in the distance that's spying on Aragorn, Gimli, and Legolas. Um, and then the guy goes away. And then the next day, a guy that they think is the same guy approaches them. And that's why they're ready to fight. Because they're like, oh man, here he comes. It's Saruman. He's going to try and deceive us and put a spell on us. And um, they find out that it's Gandalf. And they ask him, was that you last night that was spying on us? And he says no. So mm-hmm. Saruman did... Hmm. actually show up and try to like because okay. i love that scene too. yeah um that was done really well too with the voiceover yeah you are tracking the footsteps of two young hobbits where are they they passed this way the day before yesterday they met someone they did not expect oh christopher lee yeah <laughs> i should have put him down as one of my favorite things too <laughs> he he will always be Sar- Saruman to me. like Saruman and Count Dooku. <laughs> Him standing up on top of Orthanc and like calling down the, the storm. Yeah. So... I thought the introduction of Shadowfax, the Lord the horse. of Horses, was odd. Mm-hmm. In the book, it's like actually explained that he was a chieftain of the horses that was raised by the Rohirrim. Right. And Gandalf goes and takes him as a, as a gift right. from the then bad version of King Theoden. Right. So in this one, it, like Shadowfax just kind of shows up and then Gandalf goes, oh yeah, he's me on many burdens many times and stuff and you're like well why didn't we see him before <laughs> um that was just odd okay fifth thing on the list um this one bothers me mm-hmm. i love the two towers um book version of why they wind up at home's deep um 
but the way it's portrayed in the movies is weird and legolas and gimli make it even weirder so in the two towers i think that legolas and gimli are really like inconsistently portrayed mm. so at first they're upset that theoden won't go to war Hell's deep. they flee to the mountains when they should stand and fight who will defend them if not their king so then, when Theoden agrees to muster his troops at Helm's Deep, Legolas and Gimli are then, they complain to Aragorn that this is a bad idea. This is no rabble of mindless orcs. These are Urukai. Their armor is thick and their shields broad. Okay. So if Theoden evacuates everyone at Helm's Deep, <laughs> he's literally attempting to defend everybody. Yeah. Which Gimli says he's not trying to do. <laughs> yeah. So... What would be better, stand and fight against the Urukai whose armor is thick and shields are broad <laughs> at Edoras, or, you know, and you saw them. Yeah, Edoras is like surrounded by it's twigs. It's like a longhouse. It's like yeah. A, a yeah, a Viking type longhouse. It, it's like a hill with a ring of like picket <laughs> fence around it. Yeah. Okay, so if you're going to defend somebody, do you or defend your your people? Do you defend them there where you have literally 360 degrees that you can be attacked from and a picket fence? Yeah. You know, or do you go to a place that's like encased in the mountains with secret passageways out and a giant Numenorean wall to keep everybody, the invaders out? Yeah. Just seems like it would make sense. Like, oh yeah, this is he's doing the right <laughs> thing. Legolas and Gimli don't think so. Um, and uh, the other thing is, like, Helm's Deep has never been conquered by an enemy right. ever. Right. Like, I would I would assume that should configure in their calculations a little bit yeah <laughs> okay so then after all of that the whole gang is at helm's deep legless um like gimli earlier he complains that everyone's just gonna die because right. the urukai are too strong they're frightened you can see it in their eyes so what did legless and gimli think would happen if the rohirrim <laughs> had ridden out to meet the urukai like what did they think was yeah. so to me it's weird like you're mad because he won't fight, then he does fight, then you're mad that he's fighting there and not in a way that you thought he should be fighting, but then you think that if we go out and fight, we're just going to die. Like, <laughs> it doesn't make sense to me. Um, so I thought they were really, really inconsistent. Mm -hmm. And then you get at Helm's Deep, elves show up, hated that. Mm -hmm. I, I, I thought it was cool, like, as a teenager watching the movies for the first time, but now like when you compare it to what happens in the books it's just it's inferior it's like why are they there where'd they mm -hmm. come from how did they know this was even happening you yeah. know um and they, they weren't on horseback so they walked they walked from Lothlorien to helm's deep how many leagues is that yeah you know so that bothered me yeah <laughs> and they're really portrayed as sort of on their way out like middle earth is not their concern anymore mm -hmm. they're sort of mm -hmm. heading their way out to the which is true in the in the novels too so it's right. like why are you then risking death to i don't know yeah i guess you could have it is heroic to right. offer up that kind of service i guess they know, looked but... cooler than the old men and <laughs> peasants fighting the urukai Although even that part like i said He's i love the i love this and, and i realize you're it's a movie you have to get through things quick but i'm like by what siege even orcs can like shoot crossbows so high they could like kill every other archer mm -hmm. oh like i'm yeah. like come on dude like yeah. really <laughs> you have to at least get a little bit of a height to do that i mean stuff, but... <laughs> the siege weaponry was kind of cool though it was yeah yeah <laughs> yeah and like we only, like that scene where you have all the ladders kind of coming up mm -hmm. and they're hanging off of them and stuff yeah really imaginative <laughs> i guess Pete Jackson in the he showed in the uh, extended like the bonus features how he would set up the models that they used for the filming uh -huh. and he would put little soldiers around them so he could plan out how he was going to do it time. digitally and stuff. That's like that would be kind of cool. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that would be <laughs> to have a, a giant miniature and then put a bunch of army men around it and stuff. So now um, you and now you mentioned the ants. Oh yeah, okay. Why are they portrayed as simpletons that don't want to defend <laughs> Fangorn in the movie? It doesn't make sense. Like, they have to get tricked to go into battle. Yeah. You know? I mean, they um, are portrayed as slow in the sense that they don't like to come to hasty decisions. But well, not in the books, not, they are too. Not but... Intelli but not 
Yeah, but they're not dumb. Well, and then when they they're like they the get... oldest creatures of yeah, the sentient creatures of like Middle Earth. <laughs> and then they 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 finish their Entmoot, right? Mm-hmm. Their big meeting, and they decide not to go to war. Mm-hmm. What in the world? <laughs> in the novel, it was not that way. There there is something about the way that they. I don't know what it was with Pete Jackson and the other writers, but like they decided a lot of our characters will reluctantly go to battle. Like they'll try not to, and then they'll go mm-hmm. after like they're, they're ticked off enough by something that they see. Yeah. Maybe just a toning down. Cause Tolkien's writing from a time period and he's, and he's also basing it on sort of ancient writings where, where war was a time where you could, you know, did show manliness and courage and mm-hmm. the upright, and maybe we're not there anymore. And <laughs> Jackson felt he had to show everyone you have to like reach a point before you're willing to fight. Yeah, I, I don't know. It's hard to say. But then he ends though. He ends Sorry. though with Sam saying, "There's some good in this world, Mister Frodo, and it's worth fighting for." Yeah. And you just go, "Okay, well, if that's what you think, yeah. just make people go fight." Then, like, what were you gonna say, Quinn? Well, have you seen? I don't know if you've seen this movie called Four Feathers, where Mm-mm. it's um. Heath Ledger's in it, actually. And oh. he dodges going to war. And this is the time period where you, like, you go to war. He dodges it. So um, it, when you get these four feathers, it's basically people who knew you dodged it, and they're calling you out on it. His fiance, his like, And so then he has to like kind of redeem himself. And I feel like nowadays, the whole idea of dodging or like not going to war, it's like, oh, you... You, how smart were you to like go to Canada or something like that? Yeah. Where, where mm. this is, you know, I think there yeah. is like that saying goes, you know, yeah. there is something that's worth fighting for. Well, Jordan Peterson and others have said we are the West of today is a cowardly age that we really are. We're so complacent mm, in our in our comforts in our stuff that we're not willing to fight or battle for a lot of things which need to be fought for on in different ways, not necessarily physical war, but in different ways. Um, so Faramir. 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 Yes. What the heck? Like, he's one of the best characters in the books. Um, he kind of comes off... He, super virtuous in the books. Yeah, you said he's then, a beta jerk, and he is. Beta he's jerk. Kinda, he's, he's a, a real, jerk. He's a weirdo, yeah. kind of. Like, yeah. Sort of a... Yeah. Like, pining after Where his he's, brother in a weird way. Yeah. And, and, it, he's, and the book really portrays him as, even though they love each other as brothers, like it's the almost polar opposite mm-hmm. of... Mm-hmm. Like where Boromir will take the ring without thinking. Yeah. Faramir gives that whole speech where yeah. he's like, "I wouldn't do it even if if even I if found it on the waist on the yeah." yeah and I, even I if the whole it. tower was falling, the white or the white cities, all I wouldn't take it up because yeah. it would yeah and yeah, he's totally different. In yeah, the... ends don't justify means for Faramir throughout the entire book, mm-hmm. um, throughout the entire series of books, and that's why I put that as one of my least favorite adaptations. Faramir, oh, and he's a lot of people's favorite character because mm-hmm. he's like Robin Hood Ranger guy, right? Out in Athelion doing awesome work, and yeah, he's portrayed as like a weird beta guy. Um, not happy about that. Okay, the entire sequence where Grond smashes through the gate of Minas Tirith in Return of the King. So Grond is the giant battering ram, <laughs> named right? after not... Morgoth's mace. His mace, yeah. <laughs> uh, in the book, the Witch King. So this is the book. The Witch King of Angmar is the first to enter the city, and Gandalf, almost like on the Bridge of Khazad Doom, Gandalf is the only one facing him. who faces him because everyone else flees and they're terrified. And Gandalf stands alone. So in the movie version, not only is the sequence where the gate finally is crushed open less epic, what happens is probably my least favorite thing that happens in <laughs> I'm so glad it's not in the theatrical version and that you had to pay extra and see this happen in the extended edition but what happens Gandalf when he finally does approach like he does face down the the witch king right the witch king breaks Gandalf's staff yeah which <laughs> the sign means that like, yeah yeah it's a sign of his priesthood Obviously, uh, P. Jackson didn't look into what the symbolism of the staff breaking really meant. Right. He he does know it's important because he has Gandalf tell Saruman that his staff is broken in the extended edition of Two Towers. But like, when then he has the Witch King somehow has the authority to break Gandalf's staff. 
to me that was like that was like heretical <laughs> yeah you can't you can't put that movie as number one yeah when you have that happen um my least favorite thing out of all three movies was that okay extended edition heresy i like how you describe the the green goop army of oh, the dead green goop army of the dead they are they're kind of yeah. like melty looking yeah it's, it's kind of it's done better in the books i mean they're like ghosts you know and um they do really good work for aragorn clearing out not the enemies on the Pelennor fields but the enemies that are all in the surrounding counties right so that aragorn can then call out the men who are garrisoned at those places to come help defend Minas Tirith, mm-hmm. that would have, I think, just been a cooler sequence yeah. to have instead of Green Goop Army, yeah. like Slimer, come off yeah. of the boats. <laughs> if Aragorn jumps off with his banner unfurled, yeah. didn't even have that, but having the banner unfurled on the masthead of the boat and then have all of the um, like warriors of, of Gondor jump out and then they charge <laughs> the field, I thought that would just look more that would be more aesthetically pleasing even than green goop they're interesting too they're almost like a purgatory because they can't be freed because they betrayed the kings of old who Mm -hmm. who he's the descendant of yeah until he calls them forth and they answer this time so it's almost like they have to undo their sin their purgatorial state before they can leave this world Mm -hmm. yeah but you know after that I think everything from that point I really liked the destruction of the ring. The <laughs> Let me ending. just ask you this. I don't know why it just came to my head though. Yeah. What about the elves being so agile they can just walk up and down like the elephant's legs and and just Just uh, the one elf. Shoot, yeah, yeah. <laughs> just the and one shoot elf. everything around. And I don't know, it's man. like no problem. Legolas was parkour hero yeah. back in the ancient world because <laughs> like uh, for some reason he's riding a shield like a snowboard down mm-hmm. Helm's Deep. <laughs> But none of the other elves can do that. Yeah. One thing that bothered me too is in that Helm's Deep sequence, you see like the once the wall is breached and the orcs are coming in with their spears, Legolas, um, well not Legolas, but all the other elves that come in from Lothlorien, they charge some of them just like impale themselves on those spears. Yeah. It's like, I don't, okay, how come Legolas <laughs> yeah. is like Spider-Man? Yeah. He can <laughs> jump on people's yeah. heads from one to the, the other. Heck? And he's like, um, he's yeah. like, uh, well, I don't, know. I don't know. I guess he just, <laughs> I was just trains wondering. or something. Yeah, it was yeah. Just, just interesting. Uh, I was, in the books, he's not portrayed that way. No. Like, he drops yeah. arrows. He's, I thought yeah. he was this invincible Spider-Man. <laughs> no. No, he is not. Um, he is the only one who's not afraid of death, though, of the dead humans. Yeah. And he that's why he goes so willfully into the, uh, the way of the dead, because he's the only elf. But anyway... Yeah, those were that was it. You know, after after Green Goop Army, I'd say everything after that I was pretty happy with. I know a lot of people took issue with how the ring is actually destroyed in the movies versus how it is in the books. I can see why they did it the way that they did in the movies because in the books, Gollum bites the ring off of his finger, finger and yeah. then just dancing around he tumbles it. Falls in. in, yeah. Yeah. Now, unless you really understand Tolkien's and all Catholic remember. philosophy. <laughs> you're not going to understand why he did it that way. Yeah. And so I could see why in the movies they they portrayed it the way that they did. Um, and and it it kind of makes sense, you know, if you want the ring so badly at that point, after going that whole distance to try and destroy it, that you put it on, you would think that there would be a struggle to get it back after right. it's taken from you. Have you ever you seen know? the cartoon version of that one? No. Because you know that. It's the same person who made the Hobbit cartoon because the Lord of the Rings was made by someone entirely different. Oh, oh, one. oh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I've seen it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And that, the, the, they the do have it. He bites it. Yeah, and he dances around and he falls yeah. in. And then they had that weird song. Frodo of the Nine, of the nine Fingers. fingers. <laughs> Love it. Um, Love it. One thing that I thought was interesting, and I think this runs through a lot of uh, English understanding christianity of the time both anglican and catholic for example in in um the famous hymn that anglicans sing the um uh how does it go uh it's based on a poem from i forget which which author but they talk about um uh what bring me my speed a chariot the chariot of fire Mm. song but in one verse of it the anglican song about themselves is uh, will Jerusalem be builded here among these dark satanic mills? The whole idea of like 
nature versus like the industrial thing. And it's very interesting that Tolkien, um, both Saruman and Sauron mm -hmm. were lesser angels of Aule, who was the, smith, the builder, the builder, mm -hmm. the maker. And it's interesting that they come Valar, across, though. they come across in the, the end as like kind of like warped in their, their like destruction of nature. It's yeah. just an interesting And dwarves sort of are from Aule. Right. Yeah. 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 Because he gets um, tricked into making him by Morgoth. Mm -hmm. So so anyway, that should do it for the things that we don't like. Yeah. About and, having, and, and having critiqued it, we still end by saying we love this yes. movie. We really like it. We so. do love them overall. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> let, us, let us not be canceled by the one ring dot net. Yeah. <laughs> uh, we, we do like, well, actually, a lot of people there would probably go, uh, would agree with us. Yeah. Um, <laughs> And with that, why don't we close out today's uh, episode? Mm -hmm. And thanks for tuning in. Continue to tune in. This has been uh, Dirty Habits, and we look forward to seeing you all again very soon. God bless. So if you enjoyed what you saw, be sure to hit the like button, and be sure to subscribe and see more videos like this. <laughs>